Welcome back, boys and girls, for more gesturing at the camera. I'm talking about flip class. Now, once you've gone through one through three, that can move us on to number four. These are our non-Mendelian traits. But before you do this one, there's a lecture to go with it. This should be our last uh, full-on video lecture of content delivery. We're going to talk about uh, non-Mendelian genetics. So we're going to talk about non-Mendelian genetics, all that, you know, autosomal, dominant, recessive. That's all pretty accurate, but it's very, very limited. And there are many, many of our traits that don't actually follow those Mendelian genetics rules. And so, well, here they are. Just a quick recap, you got your autosomal traits, you have two alleles for every one of those traits. The alleles can be dominant or the alleles could be recessive. These again are those ones that were discovered by Gregor Mendel using the principle of segregation. Again, that's where the uh, traits will segregate away from each other, saying that, you know, the, the two alleles don't go together. And then you have that independent assortment, which should be capitalized on the I there. That basically just says uh, the alleles will segregate from each other independently so that my brown hair and my brown eyes don't actually have to be linked together. Unless, they're actually linked traits, meaning they're on the same chromosome, because mitosis and meiosis, when we make our gametes, are just separating those chromosome pairs and then separating the chromatids from each other. So if you have two traits that are both hanging out right here on chromosome number four, which I'm going to give you a hint, you have more than one trait on each chromosome. So all the traits on chromosome number four, they're all going to go together, they're all going to be linked, which means all the alleles that you got from the one side are all going to go together, meaning like your brown hair and your right hand in this, if those were to happen to be on the same chromosome. Not saying that they are, but they, uh, they could be. So if you have two traits that are linked together, the rule of independent assortment, that law that Mendel came up with, nope, just kick it right in the face because it's gone, children because they're linked if they're on the same chromosome, they go together. Let's talk about sex link. This is a specific type of linkage that we study usually a little bit more aggressively than the other forms of linkage. This is where you've got uh, traits either on the X or the Y chromosome. They could be excellent, could be Y linked. If it's excellent, the boys and the girls could go, both get it because remember, you are X uh, Y for the boys and the ladies you are X X. If it's X linked, it could be dominant or it could be recessive. Ladies, remember you get two X's, so it would take two of those recessive X linked traits in order for you to show a trait if it's recessive. If it's recessive or dominant, boys, because you only are XY, it doesn't matter. You get the trait is always showing. If it's Y linked, then you know, well, only boys are going to have it, and the ladies won't have to worry about it. Just a fun little recap about the X versus the Y chromosome. You'll notice the X chromosome is a big honking massive thing. And then the Y chromosome, just this little itty bitty little gobble down there. This is an electron micrograph. What I really like about this is that uh, women actually have less genetic material than men. Having two X's, those things are so huge, it's actually too much DNA to be expressed. And so as a result, every X in your cell is switched off randomly, which is why, you know, eyes can be doing weird things on the ladies. Because the ladies, you're just random mosaics of your 50% uh, of your X's get crumpled up into a little ball from that X chromosome and tossed down there into the corner of the, of the nucleus called a bar body. And then there they are hanging out, showing really what I like to think of as a women's hardwired genetic need to beat something into submission until it cowers in the corner and hides from the world. So, you know, ladies, if you've got an excellent trait, there's a chance to, you know, that some of your cells may be showing it or not showing it. That's basically what I was going at with that one. Now, while we're talking about the X and the Y linked traits, there's a specific notation that we use that you need to pay attention to. When we're showing an X linked trait, let's use T for trait. You do the X and you do like a superscript T. That would be the dominant version. And then if we're doing a lady who's XX, 
Let's say her other X has the recessive version. There it is, little t. That's how you always show it. And so then men being X, Y could be a superscript having the dominant form of the allele, or they could be showing the recessive form of the allele. That is the worst uh, little t ever. But do you see what I'm saying? So these are the ways you want to show it, with the X and the Y using the superscript. And you should be noticing that there's no superscript for the Y because it's X-linked, which means it's on this thing, not that little doodle. If it were on the Y, you'd do X, Y, and then you'd show the little T for trait being on the Y, X, Y, or lowercase t if you got the recessive version. This makes your life a lot easier because remember when you're dealing with sex linked traits, you're not just looking at the trait itself, but you're also looking at is it a girl or is it a boy. Remember these are linked traits. And so being a boy or being a girl uh, seems to matter. So when you're looking at these traits, uh, you should be seeing something different with depending on if it's a boy or a girl. So in the case of like uh, colorblindness, that's excellent. You need to say colorblind boy, colorblind girl, normal seeing boy, normal seeing girl. It matters. Now there's a few ones that get a little bit uh, weird. There are co-dominant alleles, just like you have co-captains, and both of them are captain of the team. You can have co-dominant alleles where both the versions of the gene are dominant. And it's scary. Try not to be too scared. What happens here is they're both shown equally. You can imagine you've got your co-captains, Captain A shouts something and Captain B shouts something else that's contradictory and half the team follows A and like half the team follows B and so you'd look at the team and you see them doing A and B things simultaneously because that's what codominus means. It means both of these are end up showing equally. A good example are blood type. You can have A, you can be B, you can be A, B, where you show both the A and the B antigen on your blood cell thing is. Because, um, yeah, that's what codominance means. If there wasn't a blending, you didn't create like some weird AB type. You're actually showing A and B. And you guessed it, there's also blood type O in there. Uh, oh no. Which is actually recessive to both A and B. So you could be AO or BO, that would give you type A, that would give you type B. In order to be O, you'd have to be double recessive OO. My brother is type O, but he's in the Navy, so they don't want his blood. I am an A, with my brother being O, and my dad being O, means I'm actually most likely AO. Right, so you can have A, B, you can be AB, you can be recessive, do all that as well. There's also incomplete dominance, which is a little bit different from codominance. Sometimes people just sort of lump these together. Technically speaking, they are different from each other, so we're going to learn them as being different. You have uh, incomplete dominance is where both alleles are dominant, but kind of, because they're not so dominant that they can't, you know, compromise. And so when you get the heterozygous, this would be like if A and B come together, and as a phenotype you get this blending, which we would then call C. Uh, a great example of this is actually in flower colors and roses. You can have red ones, you can have white ones, or you can get red white ones, which actually don't look red and white, they look pink. See, the, they blend together. See how this is different from AB, didn't give you some weird AB-ish protein on the outside, give you A and B proteins on the outside. All right, so having watched the lecture about our non-Mendelian traits, uh, again, you've got this intro right here. Again, you do need to read this information. I didn't type it up to practice how many typos I can make in a paragraph. I typed it up to give you good background info. And then you're going to answer these questions. And unfortunately, with this packet, you know, we go through here, we're going to do a little bit of non-Mendelian genetics things. This uh, is going to be probably sex-linked because we're talking about, you know, uh, chromosomes, linked, unlinked traits.
And then you got to go through here, a little bit of sex-linked uh, practice. Next page, a little bit more sex-linked. Remember, these can be dominant or recessive. And then we're going to have a little bit of a co-dominance and or incomplete dominance, where you've got two dominant alleles coming together to make different things, like these pretty cows over here. And again, make sure you read the uh, descriptors work through the problems. Unfortunately, with this one, there's pretty much only one problem of each type, so you do have to do all of number four. I repeat, all of number four. That's the video. Thanks for watching, everyone.